This week on Sail Away, we just sailed 400 miles from Grenada, and after some much needed R&R on St. John with our good friends, plus a Thanksgiving feast with the locals, we're back in St. Thomas. Lauren's dad is here and it's time to get to work. It has begun. Who says you can't get good help these days? We have our longest passage ever ahead of us in just two weeks, and a long list of items to get the boat ready to go. But our weather window is proving elusive. So here we are, let's talk about this. Yeah, we're trying to figure out our cruising plan. The weather just changes every day, but it just got real squirrely. With approximately nine days and 1,400 miles to sail, it's not just the boat that has to be ready. We've got enough food for six months. I, don't know, I might have to throw somebody over. I eat a lot. Okay, then you're the first to leave. <laughs> <laughs> we might be ready to sail 1,200 miles, maybe. We might not be ready. Ever wish you could escape normal life and experience more of the world? So meet me on that island. Well, we did just that. We sold everything we owned on dry land and sailed away. Hey. Promise me that we'll sail away. Now we are roaming the planet in search of new adventures and sharing it with you every week. Just promise me that we'll sail away. So hit subscribe and escape normal with us. I'll be yours forevermore. Come on, it's just that little button down there. That's it. Well, we are here in St. Thomas, Sierra La Maya. I'm working, 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 working. And Lauren is on shore with Rivers doing all of our laundry. And the cruise ships came in and we are back to our favorite sport, watching all the boats in the anchorage do the do si -do. As you see, we're pointing this way. They're pointing that way. He's pointing almost our way. They just did a complete 360. And I've just been sitting out here drinking my coffee, keeping my eye on this guy and this guy. And if the boats just get turned in the opposite direction, you wind up right on top of each other. That could be a scramble by myself. Now they're doing another circle. They both came at the exact same time and they both started powering up their side thrusters. And that one still has the thrusters going while he's trying to get tied up. Everything, Zeke. All of this prop wash comes off of these thrusters, pushes into the anchorage. So the boats kind of get spinning, depending on if you're right in front of one of the thrusters. Some boats get turned around, others a little less, so it's all confused. Then when they stop, all water comes rushing back the other direction. Our wind is coming from over here, about right there actually. And our stern is turned all the way around this way. And that's all because the water is moving back into the anchorage from the other direction. It's just a crazy phenomenon to sit here and watch. And, uh, I fired up the motors, I've been over here playing around on the throttles, trying to keep the boat straight, not let it get too out of sync with any of the other boats that are nearby. All right, I'm gonna fill up my coffee and maintain my watch. Eventually I'll get back to work. Moving again. What is going on? Weird. We are on the move. It is bright and early. About 6.30 now. We are headed to St. John's for a little land time. We have some friends who were on a boat a couple years ago. They had rented out their house on St. John's. Now they sold their boat and they're living back in their house. So they invited us over for some Thanksgiving fun and just to hang out. Um, I'm very excited, but it means that I have to kind of do some Thanksgiving prep while underway. So we'll see how that works. Gotta make some dessert. It'll be an adventure. All right, we're gonna attempt to make some uh, underway brownies. Buckeye brownie bars. <sighs> this kitchen's already a mess because we didn't clean up after last night. So it's gonna be a little complicated. Add to that, just moving. We'll see what happens. But right now, 
Easy enough. I got a box mix. Eight knots up wind, baby. That's right. About 40, 50 degrees off. this morning head to St. John and we are doing an upwind sail to get there hopefully one tack out and one tack back in it's always kind of a rough sail up this uh, part of the south side of St. Thomas it's always kind of wavy windy today is no different but can she point you might ask I'd say yes We've had anything from about nine knots up to 22. And she's been holding her course really well. This is probably the most I've had a chance to like really dial her in upwind, see how close I can point. And this is about it. We're at about 45, 40 to 45 degrees, but it's doing it really well. It's very comfortable. We're, we're going over waves, so we're pretty much almost dead into the waves. Yeah, still marching right along about seven. We were doing eight one a little bit ago. Just depends on the uh, vagaries of the wind. But we're liking it. Now I just got to make sure I don't hit Buck Island. Every day it's named Island after the after, after Ohio State. After the Buckeyes? After, yeah. Buck Island. Just not to the east of it. All right, well, it got a little crazy on the passage, but let's see what this looks like. It's supposed to be like a Reese's cup. Oh, well. the hell I just put it. No, it's, it's, no, do not. That's for tomorrow. And it'll all be hopefully good. I mean, it can't be bad because it's chocolate and peanut butter and chocolate. Making our way to Cruise Bay at our, our current top speed. Fighting with error codes for what week? Ophelia is right over there. We're leaving her on the morning ball for two nights. First time we've left her. Hell, we hardly ever left Cecilia. Alright, we'll be there eventually. Alright, we got here. Like I know Did he hop right up in there? Yep. What a good boy. Despite our nerves about leaving Ophelia, we couldn't wait to hang out with Nils and Meredith and Anton and Nate. We met them on our first season cruising and were excited to catch back up. <laughs> What's up, Nate? Hey! Oh, this is beautiful. What's up, Anton? How you doing, man? Their house on St. John is beautiful. They're currently living there while they hunt for their next boat, something we're really encouraging. And in case you're wondering, yes, it is a vacation rental with tons of room for everybody. So back to land life for you? Yeah, this isn't bad. <laughs> Holidays can be an odd time living on a boat. We're usually hundreds if not thousands of miles away from family. Always in a new place and often a place that doesn't celebrate holidays the same way we do. So getting the chance to celebrate Thanksgiving with some of our favorite people in a really beautiful place was pretty special. The celebration itself turned out to be a potluck among all the locals of Coral Bay. 
The food was fantastic. Best Thanksgiving food we've had in a few years. And all the folks we met there were even better. It was a Thanksgiving we won't soon forget. And the perfect way to gear us up for all the work we had ahead of us. Well, heading in to pick up Lauren's dad and our friend John. And this is our max speed right now. Don't know what the hell's wrong with this uh, motor, but we'll figure it out. It stayed running long enough that it looks like I'm gonna get in, so at least there's that. I'm a coming! Keep looking. Yeah, it's definitely them. They're going very slowly, but it looks like the motor's working, kind of. You'll get there eventually. But it looks like this way. It looks like this boat is like 50 feet long. Oh my gosh. Well, it is almost 50 feet long. Away. I mean, I think you're you're actually correct in your assumptions. Yay! You made it. Got me there without dying. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Clearly not bad. It has begun. Who says you can't get good help these days? It's hard to keep it though. <laughs> I knew these guys would be good to have around. That winch has gotten really, really bad lately, and now that John opened it up, it's easy to see why. God, I think it's rusted inside. There's nothing. Nothing lubing those gears at all. We already got a new furling line installed. Those guys are working on that. We're gonna try and get the dinghy motor at least running some way. And then we've got a bunch of pretty awesome stuff here to install. Got a new Xantrex 3000 XC Pro inverter charger and a control screen for it. It's not actually a nav pod, but it's a uh, scan strap pod with a Raymarine Hybrid Touch E120. And we got that off eBay, we got the pod off eBay. I got the Xantrex off eBay and for pretty damn impressively low prices. Um, and they're all obviously in good shape and pretty new still. Also one thing I got, I also got this here used piece of stainless which is pedestal guard. But that's essentially gonna replace this rickety railing that wobbles all over the place. And it'll go right there just in front of the compass and hold our nav for us so that, especially when entering harbors and finding anchor spots, I can actually tell where we are and if we're gonna hit anything. Those are the main things that we're gonna try to get installed before we leave. The prep is underway. It's not looking too healthy, man. So somebody stuck a bolt in, in place of one of the pins and just sort of ground it down so it would fit. So it was never really the right diameter and it's rusty as hell. And then everything's just sticky. And that one does not want to come out. I'll let them handle that. I'll get myself on the easy job. Parts for our new bimini. I hope that's right. I do too. Uh, I am trying to mount up our nav station while Lauren's dad and John try to fix our outboard motor. Who knows what we're going to find tomorrow morning? It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine, everybody. Totally fine. Power tools while drinking. Yeah, that one worries me. That's not the best mark I've ever made. Might have to check that one. Bright and early. Pitter patter, let's get at her. I dreamed last night that Chris fixed our motor and he felt bad that he didn't live up to my dreams. 
So, so here we are. Here I am. Yeah, we've got this thing pretty much mounted up and ready to go. I just drilled our holes in the stainless for our power supply and other wiring. And I'm about to get that finished up. And if I can do that, my next hope is to get that inverter installed. And then I gotta work. If I can get those two things done, I'll feel like I can go try to get my work done. So we'll be in pretty good shape. If we can have an outboard motor. How's this inverter install going? I'm not going well at all. It comes on, then it goes right back off. It's like it doesn't see any AC load at all. And I mean, maybe there's something wrong in our system, and that's why the other one wasn't working. So, I don't know. Your dad's down there trying to troubleshoot the panel, I think. And I'm just trying to look through the instructions to see if there's any kind of uh, troubleshooting we can do. Yeah, I'm just staring at it. <laughs> Rivers, what is that sweet, sweet sound down there? <laughs> That's the sound of an inverter working. We have inversion. It's finally working. What's not working is our panel. We're not sure why. Maybe a firmware problem. But it's working. We got it charging the batteries. The inverter's now working, so like our outlets actually work. It's working, but not that, that good, but it's working fine. It's working really good. Okay, yeah. Yeah, okay, okay, cool. Rivers is having a little bit of a chill day, like literally, he's a little under the weather maybe. You, you don't seem like you feel too bad, right? No, my my hands under my head, it like, be, be, it's like warm for a minute and it just goes away. Right. Wait a second. Well, I think you'll be fine. Yeah. Cool. Let's clean up with all this crap. Well, we gotta mount this thing, actually. Yeah. Get on that. Stop the chips. Stop the chips. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like actually a pretty successful day. We got a working inverter. We have working nav unit outside. That's pretty much it. That's pretty uh, good. We fixed some drinks. We fixed some drinks. Lauren fixed the drinks. That's the most important fix of all. All, of all right. Well, I'm gonna mount this thing. Some pretty snug in there. We'll get get a little room there for its uh, airflow, but it's working. Hot oh. damn! We don't talk about things on camera enough, so here we are. Let's talk about this. Yeah, we're trying to figure out our cruising plan, but now that we're getting kind of closer to our departure day, the weather just it just changes every day. And it is a long passage, so it's like a long stretch of days. So we, we can't expect it to stay the same. It's, it's going to do that. But it just got real squirrely. We had thought we were going to take a path that took us sort of north of the Bahamas. And then we would either cut through just south of the Abacos and go north into the Gulf Stream, or we would just take a nice arcing path right into Charleston, depending on what the wind was doing and any fronts coming through or whatever. Well, there's a big front that is kind of passing across the Atlantic right now, and that changed our approach. The way the wind direction is going to be, it's really northwest and very north in some, some days. So it looks like our preferred path is south of the Bahamas. So we just Ow. cut south of the Bahamas between the Bahamas and Cuba and make our way to the Gulf Stream. Maybe we sit somewhere for a couple days and, and make sure we get a good Gulf Stream window, no north wind or anything like that. Well now, at that point the wind gets all squirrely. There's a huge front that winds up blowing south from the east coast of the US. We can't hop in the Gulf Stream in that, it's pretty powerful. In the first almost two days of our passage, it's open ocean uh, to the north of us. So, I mean right now it's showing two and a half to three meter waves, eight to nine second interval. And that sounds like it could be okay. And anywhere from 15 to 20 knots, but then the wind drops off. All we're saying is, it's getting really kind of hard to know what we're doing. I mean, we're gonna probably leave, so far there's no other day that makes sense to no, leave. No, we gotta leave on Tuesday. So Tuesday's our leaving day. And then we'll stop. <laughs> in we'll the Bahamas just, and then for, we gotta stop yeah reevaluate yeah that's all we can really do at this point 
All right, there's your Saturday night update, and we leave on Tuesday. Yeah. I've had emotionalness about leaving. I don't like it. I don't want to leave the Caribbean. We've yeah. been here for three years. I don't like it. <laughs> All you've wanted to do is leave the Caribbean for quite a while I know. Now. You're welcome. <laughs> this is yeah. sad. It's kind of home now. Yeah. Everything is, is home when you're on a boat. That's true. That was kind of the point, I guess. Grocery trip number two of the day. There it is after the big laundry trip. Let's go do it. Planning a long passage can be really challenging, especially when you have multiple crew members with different schedules, holidays coming up, and a dock space waiting for you on a specific date when you get there. One thing that's not a question everybody's got to eat. Well, we're not starving, at least not for a long time. We've got enough food for six months. Well, I might have to throw somebody over for it to last six months. I eat a lot. Okay, then you're the first to leave. <laughs> hey. I, knew, I knew that was coming as soon as I said it. <laughs> food will go a lot farther without me on board. Once we get it established now, you can't be mad. Are you excited for all these beans that you're going to eat? Oh, man. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or a lot of shit. <laughs> a lot. Yeah, I was gonna clean this out a little because this fits a lot nicer. Drops right down through there. Yeah. Just want to get it down in here. He's a little bound up. All right, it is our last night here. I think everybody's super stressed. But we have done a lot of shopping, a lot of provisioning, a lot of maintenance, a lot of just like checking things. So we are going out for one last shore leave. We need to have a little bit of relaxing and chill time, even if it's just for an hour before we leave tomorrow morning. So we're going out to the doghouse pub. Wish us luck and that we're not too stressed and can actually relax. Cheers! We might be ready to sail 1,200 miles. Maybe. We might not be ready. <laughs> Well, we should be somewhere by Saturday. When it came right down to it, relaxing wasn't a problem. We were stocked up, we had a good boat, with hopefully just enough of the right equipment to get us where we needed to go. And we had a top-notch crew with tons of sailing experience. Nothing left to do but shove off on our longest passage ever. Nine days and 1,400 miles to Charleston, South Carolina. Let's do this thing.